All right, folks, welcome back to the show again. And yes, he's wearing one of those shirts again. Uh, I got, I'm, I'm sunburned, man. Doctor told me not to go out in the sun, and I read where uh, UV ray light was a treatment for eczema. So I've been going out in the sun a little bit each day. And well, I'm up to about an hour, an hour and a half each day now, but man, I'm getting dark city brown. No eczema, baby. It's all friggin' gone, and it's gonna stay gone. Today's episode, we have a 2007 Fender American Stratocaster Deluxe neck. Came in the mail today, and uh, with some serious problems. Very serious problems. We're gonna unbox it. I'm gonna bring you closer. We're gonna unbox this and see. I'll show you what kind of bad problems it's got. Might have to rip a truss rod out of it. Uh, I don't know yet. Just stay tuned and we'll find out together. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> well, I, I decided to leave you right there for right now for the unboxing. Uh, I get you over here too close and you're able to see all the... I'll dock somebody. That's what will happen. That's exactly what will happen. We don't want to dock anybody. So I'm going to leave you right there for right now. Then I'll get you and bring you over closer. And we'll see uh, what's up with this neck. It does have some serious problems like I say. And we're going to find out what it's going to take to fix it. The owner wants to uh, also do a fret job, level the frets, crown them, and all that jazz. So that's in this, uh, this next future. If we can fix the problem it has. I guess there wouldn't be any sense in recrowning, uh, you know, leveling the frets and doing all that. We can't get the, uh, the neck fixed. So, let's see what we got here. This guitar is from uh, the other side of the country. <laughs> I don't know where you guys live at. But, it's a long ways from home. You can search your channel for a Fender Biflex stress rod system. I did uh, one of those last year. And it was for the same guy. Same guy that owned that neck owns this one. I don't know if I'm allowed, allowed to tell you his name or not, so I'm not going to, at least not right now, until I find out from him. This is going to be a series of videos, a short series, it won't be very many. Well, it might turn into a few, I don't know, you just have to stay tuned and see. <laughs> yeah. Like I say, he wants the frets redid on it, if I can fix the, the neck, the problem the neck has. And I'm going to show you what problem that is, as soon as I get it unmummified. It uh, looks like a mummy right at the moment. But we're going to take care of all that. Dang, there's more tape. Wow. Maybe I can just rip that. Yeah, there we go. Rip it and leave the tape on there. I don't think I can get it out here. Oh, there we go. Well, I see a love letter. Oh, I see a love letter. All right. Got a rubber band here. And a love letter. Let me, uh, I'm going to pause the camera and read this love letter. Just make sure it's okay to read the love letter to you. Let's pull that off like this. There we go. It's a beautiful neck, man. Check it out. Fender American Stratocaster Deluxe Model. It's a shame. It's going to be a shame if we can't fix it. But he sent it to the right place. I can fix it. If I have to turn the fingerboard off and put in a new truss rod, you know, a two-way adjustable rod. Let me get situated and pick some of this stuff up and I'll bring you over closer and show you the problems with the neck. Hold on. Well, normally I wouldn't share this, but I gotta share it with you, man. <laughs> this is just a copy of our emails that we exchanged and the pricing and all that jazz on the neck. Uh, Randy, for your information, Chris is the guy's name. I don't know if I can tell you his last name or not. And he did send a love letter and i got to read it to you. It says, Hi Randy, you do such a fantastic job. You did such a fantastic job on my 50th anniversary strap neck. I wanted to tip you, Chris. And there's the tip he sent me. Chris, thank you, man. I'm glad you like the work and the neck. And I'm going to do the same, or try to do the same with this neck here. Thank you so much for that. Okay, now I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. And bring you over here closer. And, uh. I'll explain to you what's up with this neck. <laughs> Just one beauty of a neck. I want to show it to you up close. Show you the frets if I can get them to show up in the camera. See, you start to see a little fret wear under the first string there. 
And as we come on down, it don't look too bad in the camera what I'm seeing. Now, trust me, it's a lot worse than what this camera is showing. Wow, the worst wear is on the third string here. If you look along that area, wow, it's not showing up in the camera hardly at all. Yeah, I think maybe you can see it a little bit there. And under the first string. There's a lot of grooves in that uh, under the first string. If I get them to show up, I can't get them to show up in the camera. There, I think you can see them under the, right at the end of the fret. That's on almost every fret. See how rough that is? That fret's flat. And then in under the third string, there's a lot of flat spots. Not all that bad, really, but he wants the frets done while it's here. Now let me show you the real problem. The main problem with this neck, before we can ever do anything to the frets, is to get the neck straight on it. Now the owner tells me that he's got the truss rod jacked up tight city, almost to the point of wallering out. Waller, isn't that a cool word? Wallering out the head. He says it's really tight. Well, if I take a straight edge, now this is not on, under string tension, remember. It is not, no tension on it. You can imagine what it would be with string tension on it. And I stick a piece of paper in here like this. Check that out, man. From the first fret, all the way from first fret there, all the way to next to the last one. And that's all forward bow. That is a lot of forward bow. I should, it should just have a little bit, actually with no strength tension, it probably ought to be straight. But he's uh, cranked on that, and I assume he did it with the strings off of the guitar, the string stress off of it, and uh, tried to get back bow in, or at least get it straight. I don't know, you probably can't see this, but I can hold it up here this way and show you. I doubt you can see that. There is a lot 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 of forward bow relief in that neck a bunch of forward bow way too much forward bow and the truss rod is very tight I'm gonna get a wrench hold on I gotta go get wrenches and I'm just gonna feel it and see he might have uh, even changed the size of it because it's you know if he did wear it out in there he said he was afraid of breaking the truss rod if he did wear it out I might have to use a metric wrench on it and uh, you know just to see what it feels like. So when we get wrenches, we'll feel it. <laughs> All right, got standard wrenches, sizes, and metric. Because he said, well, he talked that head was pretty bad in there. He said he'd still get a wrench on it, but it was uh, getting pretty bad because he tried to tighten it really tight. So that should be a uh, 330 seconds standard is what it should be. Is that 330 seconds? No, it's the wrong one. That's an eight. Wow. Here he is three thirty seconds. So I can get it out of there. Here we go. This is three thirty seconds. Now there's how much plays in that head. Wow, it does have a, a lot of of play in it. Check that out, man. So let's try a metric on it. Maybe it's stripped out enough that a metric will go in there. Equivalent to that, or close to it, be uh, 2.5, I think. 2.5 millimeter. And that's way too little. Okay, let's go one step bigger. Next one I have here is a 3. Yeah, that's probably going to be too big. That one's too little. 2.5 is too little. And 3, of course, would be too big. Wow, that head is ruined, man. You know, I might have another head here, depending on what that is. Alright, well, here goes the moment of truth. I'm going to try to loosen that. He said uh, it got that way, I guess, from him trying to get it tight and get that back bow out of uh, forward bow out of it and get some get it straight at least straight you know you know, I'm going to get it straight to do the frets on it so we're going to try to loosen it it 
it's turning. It did turn. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm gonna take that all the way out because I think I may have one here that will fit that. Wow, I'm glad that didn't finish stripping out, man. It's wallered big time. Is that a word? Wallered? Here it just got tight again. Maybe it's a two-way adjustable rod. Shouldn't be. What do you say, 2007? Wow, I'm starting to think it might be a two-way adjustable rod. That is a lot of neck relief right there, man. Maybe it is a two-way adjustable rod. I didn't think they put them in 2007 American. Yeah, that's not going to come off of there. It's getting tighter. It is a two-way adjustable rod for sure. So let me tighten it back up until it's loose again. There, it just got loose. There, it's loose. Wow. Man, that's a lot of play. That's, look at this. Let me tighten it up just to where it starts to get tight. I'll show you better. Right there. It started to, I think. Yeah. Check that out, man. Look at the play in that. Metric size, the next step up is too big and too small. That is a shame. So, this calls for extreme measures. And it ain't going to happen on this video tonight. <laughs> Let me try to look at this one more time here. 2.5 would be 1.5 to. 2.5. That's going to be too small, I think. Yeah. And then the set goes from 2.5 to 3. And the 3 is too big. See? It's not even catching the, the head. Okay, let me try standard size. Next size up from the standard size. I pulled it out a minute ago. It's a 1 8. Here's the 1 1 8. It's going to be too big, I'll bet you. Oh, that sucks so bad. The only one that fits is that 3.30 seconds. That's what it's supposed to be, but it's supposed to fit a lot tighter than this. Look at this, man. Wow, that's a lot of play. It'll turn it. In fact, I want to loosen it back like it was. Get it in a loose state for right now. Well, there we are. Now I've got some other 3.30 seconds here. You know what? Let me tighten it back up and try these. See if they're any tighter at all. Just snug it. Now I have two of these. I've already got, got them out. Three, uh, 30 seconds. I can't believe the next size won't fit. This is 3.30 seconds here. It might be a little bit tighter fit, and this is 3.30 seconds. And it might be even a little tighter than that one. Actually, that's probably what I'll use, because that seems to fit that. Tighter than this one does. Wow, man. Well, no. If I use that end of the wrench, I can get down in there a lot deeper. And you see here, a lot less play because I'm getting past where it's been wallered out. Or probably if I use this, I can get in a lot deeper. Yeah. But I think this might be the key right here. That's fairly tight. I can show you here, maybe. That's not too bad right there. I think that is tighter than this one. And tighter than this one. Well, that one there is pretty tight. So we're going to leave those two out for right now. And, uh, Tell you what I'm going to do. 
Wow. That's unbelievable, man. I wish you could see. Maybe you can see this. Just how much, if I can hold it just right, like so. Maybe you can see how much relief is in that neck. Truss rod just a little bit tight right now, but it's going to have to go back a long ways. In fact, I'm going to have to probably put back after I get it, if I can get it flat, straight, do the frets, then I'll probably try to get more back bow in it. That way when I send it back to him and he puts it on the guitar and strings it up, the, the strings will pull either pull relief into it or at least he'll have the option of loosening this down till he gets the proper relief he likes in it. That's probably the way that's going to work, I'm thinking. Always thinking, always get me in trouble. Should never think. Quit thinking, man. <laughs> I'm going. But boy, she sure is ate up down in there. Let me get a flashlight and look down in there and see if I can. Yeah. He is chewed up pretty good. I can see it. And it is a. Uh, this, you know, I was just thinking, this could be not a two way rod. I don't think Fender used those in the American Stratocasters in the 2000s or late 2000s, early 2000s either. I don't think they used to two-way rod. I'm thinking this is that same Biflex truss rod system like the one I worked on. Uh, you can search the channel or I'll put a link down here to it or a link up here and you can watch that video if you want to. And I'm thinking this is the same Biflex system in there. I'll show you how that works. See there's a wooden plug in that hole. This dark part of wood right here. That's a wooden plug with a hole in it. I have some of those here too. Okay. When you tighten the rod, of course, it puts, it's supposed to put back bow into it. And when you loosen it, the head, the adjusting nut on the truss rod screws up against that, that piece of wood, that plug right there that you see. It's darker than the rest of the, the uh, it's darker than the rest of the peg head, but it's lighter than this wood right here that's part of the fretboard. Can you see what I'm talking about? It's got a hole in it. Okay, when you loosen that rod so much, that head goes up against that plug and it starts to force a uh, uh, forward bow into it. It's the way the Biflex system works. You tighten it and it puts, and it's like a two-way truss rod, but it's different. The way it works is different. It's not a two-way, it's a one-way. But it's got that plug in there for the head to seat up again. Now I could drill this plug out. That's what I did on the other, the other video. I did change the head on it. I could drill that plug out and then I would be able to screw the head completely off of the truss rod and put a new one on it. And I've got one laying right here, man, someplace. That's way better than that one. I'll talk to the owner. I don't know if you I might be able to get the neck straight without doing that. But I'll try that first and then I'll talk to him and see if he wants me to drill it out and put a new head on it. Or we may end up taking a fretboard off and putting a new truss rod in it all together. I don't know exactly yet what's going to happen. That's going to run into some uh, major bucks so compared to what we talked about. Uh, I don't know. You just have to stay tuned and see, I guess. Anyways, stay tuned. We're going to get this neck straight one way or another. I've got some ideas to do it with this truss rod and this head if it don't strip completely out or break off. And in the meantime, I might go through all my wrenches, try to find one that fits that better. I've got a shit ton of them. And I'll just go through every one of them, try to find some odd size one, you know, that might fit it better than the ones I've tried against it up until right now. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be interesting and it's going to be quick and it's going to get done one way or another. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Look out for Earl and be good to each other. Take care of yourselves. Nobody's going to do that for you. You know that. Cheers. See you soon. Ooh. Good boogie, Paul.